Believe it or not, cyberbullying is not always illegal. Hi, I'm Professor Mark Grabowski, and this short lecture will cover the laws against cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is the use of email, instant messaging, chat rooms, pagers, cell phones, or other forms of information technology to deliberately harass, threaten, or intimidate someone. Following recent student suicides that were linked to cyberbullying, many states have passed or are considering laws that would criminalize cyberbullying. Such legislation, however, raises First Amendment issues. The problem is, cyberbullying is often limited to online insults about things like someone's physical appearance, their intelligence, their friends, or things of that nature. So, insults such as Sam is dumb, Jamal is fat, or Pedro is ugly are not illegal. They are simply opinions and therefore protected by the First Amendment, and that constitutional protection extends to mean opinions. However, private schools can punish all forms of cyberbullying because they're not governed by the First Amendment. Only public schools and the government are restricted by the Constitution's Free Speech Protection Clause. In addition, the United States Supreme Court has allowed public school officials in grades K-12 through to restrict student speech if it interferes with the school's educational mission. So public elementary schools and public high schools could probably punish students for cyberbullying with impunity. School officials may have difficulty identifying the culprits, however, since cyberbullying is often done anonymously. But the problem is, cyberbullying is not limited to children in K-12 through schools. It can occur in college and in the workplace. When a relationship goes bad, a person may cyberbully their former boyfriend or girlfriend. What can be done to stop that? Some forms of cyberbullying are illegal, regardless of where it happens or who does it. If a statement is threatening, such as, I'm going to kill you, it's not protected by the First Amendment. Or if the statement is libelous, which means it's provably false and seriously damages someone's reputation, it's not protected by the First Amendment. Or if the statement is an invasion of privacy, for example, if a cyber bully reveals a private fact, like a medical condition, that the individual hasn't revealed to anyone, it's also not protected. These forms of cyberbullying are legal, and were illegal long before the internet became a thing. Some people think the law needs to go even further, and that new or additional cyberbullying laws are needed. For example, in 2012, a New York State Senator proposed an anti-cyberbullying bill that would have essentially banned all anonymous online speech. The bill would have required website administrators to remove any anonymous comments upon request unless the poster agreed to reveal his true name and his home address. The legislation would have undermined the constitutional right to speak anonymously on issues of public interest, a right which the Supreme Court has affirmed multiple times. In addition, several public universities have adopted speech codes that ban constitutionally protected speech. For example, in 2014, one state university adopted an anti-cyberbullying policy that defined cyberbullying to include harsh text messages or emails. Under such a vague and broad definition, simply expressing anger at a roommate for not taking out the garbage could get a student in trouble. Needless to say, when such codes are challenged in court, they invariably are struck down by judges. While the Supreme Court gives some leeway to K-12 school administrators, they typically don't do the same for speech restrictions at public universities. Aside from the constitutional issues, there is also opposition to new cyberbullying laws because some people believe you can't legislate norms. You can only teach norms. Just because there's a law, people don't necessarily follow it. For example, look at using cell phones while driving. Most people seem to do it, especially teenagers. The law in itself does not render citizens virtuous. So in short, 
Stopping cyberbullying through laws will remain a challenge. Education and parenting are arguably better routes to fix the problem. Once again, this has been Professor Mark Grabowski. If you're in my internet law course and have questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Thanks for watching.